Okay, let's get to it. Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm reviewing the fourth and final installment in the Karate Kid franchise. Well, that is until the 2010 uh, remake arrives. So that would be the final. It's the next Karate Kid, which Ralph Macchio does not return in the role of Daniel LaRusso. Yes, because he got older. He went on to do films like My Cousin Vinny, as well as Naked in New York, which came out the same year as this. This time, it's played by a female lead named Julie Son, that's played by Hilary Swank. And one of her breakout performances, um, after she just played a ditzy friend of Buffy's in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um... Nobuyuki Pamarita finally made his return as Mr. Miyagi, so it was great to see him again, but sad to say this is going to be his last film. When he played him. Yeah, unfortunately though, it's considered to be unnecessary. It didn't need to be made. That was the problem. Um, though the acting, however, was... For what it is, it's it's excellent, at least. But but it is indeed the worst of the franchise compared to uh, Part Three. Yes, I mean it was the worst of of the trilogy. Yeah, you know, because of the changes things were going through. But on, the only saving grace, of course, was Terry Silver. <laughs> okay. Well, this time. It's about um, Julie Son, who's just already feeling completely angry and stubborn because she lost her parents. She has to be living with her grandmother for quite some time, pretty much, because that's the only family member that she has left. But next thing you know, she does go to high school, having to deal with all these bullies that turn out to be the security guard in training called the Alpha Elite. And so then you got Mr. Miyagi to join in to actually uh, deal with her anger issues. You know, since so she got suspended. And then that way she had to go all the way to the monastery so she'll be able to learn karate over there. And that's where it leads to. Yeah, and she also has a love interest, which is a guy, of course. And then later on, she'll begin the fight against uh, the leader of, of the game of the Alpha Elite. Yeah. It's what it is. Um, the film was a flop at the box office, unlike the first three films, although the third one didn't do quite much. And... Um, not only that, but it had 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep, it was a critical and commercial failure completely. It was released on September 9th of 1994. So that wasn't something that you had to release uh, during the summer because you just released it in the fall. Or at this rate, it was still summer, but it was begun to become the fall. So this is where people go to school. So I can see why not many people went to see it. Uh, they, it is produced by Jerry Weinstripe, who produced the first three films, and of course the remake. Um, but this time it's directed by Christopher Kane, the same man who gave us Young Guns, and The Principal with Jim Belushi, so he's a great director. But he can do better. And it's written by Mark W. Lee, instead of Robert Mark Common, because he's actually a playwright, a poet, yeah, a political writer, and, and he also wrote a children's book. But I don't think he was a great writer for this film. Not for this particular material. So, um, so anyway, it's a story about uh, Julie Son um, getting completely angry and stubborn because she lost her parents during a, a car crash. So she had to stay with her grandmother for for a long time. But she's not getting along with her very well. So when 
Mr. Miyagi arrives, well, this is where he tries his best to teach her how to not deal with this anymore. She, Of course, she has a pet hawk named Angel. It's a Harris hawk, and then she has to deal with the school bullies who are security guards in training called the Alpha Elite. So, so with that, I mean, being suspended, she had to go all the way to the monastery with Mr. Miyagi to teach her how to to use uh, karate skills and be able to later fight against them, if that's the case. And of course, he does. She does have a love interest, which is a guy named Eric, who happens to be the the one who's becoming the security guard in training. He's actually the security guard at a train station, and then. But he was going to be part of um, the Alpha Elite as well, but that certainly wasn't the case. And by the way, the, the leader of, of that is not other than Colonel Paul Dugan, played by Michael Ironside. So, yeah. Okay, well, it's obviously Columbia Pictures was desperate to have another film in the franchise because they were, you know, they're trying to get some success, you know, already with. Um, several movies coming up that summer, you know, like Speed, uh, The Shadow, The Lion King, uh, Blown Away, um, e even the um, Forrest Gump, among others. So I think they were just struggling pretty hard. Kind of was a tough year for the studio because I, I know already with the the way things were going. Okay, well, let's get to the review. Stars uh, Nobuyuki Pat Morita, Hilary Swank, Michael Ironside, Constant Towers, Chris Conrad, Michael Cavaveri, Walton Goggins, who, who went on to do uh, movies like Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Frank Welker, and Alcinio Sonny Trinidad. Yeah, it's written by Mark W. Lee and it's directed by Christopher Kane. The movie begins set in Boston, Massachusetts. We meet Mr. Miyagi, played by Nobuyuki Pabarita, in his final performance in the role. Um, he attends a commendation for Japanese American soldiers who fought in the 42nd Regimental Combat Team during World War II. He meets Larissa Pierce, played by Constant Towers, who is the widow of his commanding officer and lieutenant named Jack. At her home, they catch up on old times and war stories together until he was being introduced to Pierce's granddaughter, Julie, played by Hilary Swank, who is a high school teenage girl struggling with anger issues due to her parents' death. Uh, in a car accident that happened recently. So her behavior had led to friction between Julie and her grandmother. They're not getting along very well, along with her fellow students and teachers. Um, therefore, at night, she sneaks in to take care of a injured Harris Hawk. Yeah, she had a injured wing named Angel but she's being kept inside a pigeon coop on top of the roof until she was being chased down by local cops. Miyagi invited Luisa to stay at his house in Los Angeles to enjoy peace and quiet tending his garden while he decided to stay in Boston as Julie's uh, caretaker. Um, so at high school, Julie meets and befriends, um, which it definitely became her love interest, Eric McGowan, who's played by Chris Conrad, who's a security guard in training and a pledge for a shady school's security fraternity known as the Alpha Elite, that's led by Colonel Paul Dugan, played by Michael Ironside. So the members are being taught to enforce all the school rules, mostly using physical force. The leader of the gang, however, we, that's part of it, is actually the toughest, strongest, 
and most aggressive of them all, yeah, and a complete asshole, yeah, Ned Randall, who's played by Michael Calaveri. Anyway, he joins in with the rest of the gang, and including um, Charlie, played by Walton Goggins, who's just going around um, just raping the Julie son completely. He was about to until she escaped from that. Uh, then um, Eric learns of Angel and promises to feed her while Julie is with uh, Miyagi. Um, as a promise. Because we also learn that Eric, um, as a teenager, is uh, wor working as a security guard at a local train station. Both Julie and Miyagi, um, just for a while, you know, they weren't um, getting along either. I mean, especially when she had to came back um, from Eric, yeah, because he had a nice, uh, lovely uh, red sports car that he drives by, because he was the one who uh, picked her up just after, you know, Eric was doing his training over there with the Alpha Elites. Um, or the fact that he's <laughs> that uh, Paul uh, Dugan just spotted uh, Mr. Miyagi on the corner. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, yes, because uh, Miyagi did accidentally uh, went inside her room just when she was about to change. So that that was an accident. So <laughs> he didn't mean to. Um, so then suddenly um, Julie uh, got out as as fast as she could and then she almost got hit by a car by jumping into a tiger position yeah it was a um, a pizza man who was just driving by you know trying to get his deliveries but he didn't mean to I mean apparently Julie didn't know what she was doing but apparently she didn't know about the the tiger position very well so at that rate, um, she finally uh, confided in Miyagi when he approves of Julie's talents, but she also reveals that she, she taught karate by her father, who then learned from her grandfather, which is Miyagi's student. Um, of course, um, during that time, too, um, uh, Mr. Miyagi uh, had uh, Julie's son... Um, being hired as a babysitter to take care of all these boys, so that's where they're going around, uh, you know, throwing and hitting her with Nerf balls and and guns that they got. <laughs> I mean, they're they're like it, it was going all over the place, and then Mr. Miyagi came by to bring some more. <laughs> I mean, I was actually expecting Deb and Sawa to show up, you know, by saying, "Don't you get it? It's Nerf or nothing." <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting to see that, but now nah, that didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, she had to take care of um, all these boys uh, as part of the job. Okay, um, so then the next day, Julie had to sneak into school to feed Angel until she was being detected by the Alpha Elites, including Ned. So they chased her throughout the entire school and went straight into the cafeteria where she hides until Ned finds her directly through the kitchen and then the, hits the, the fire alarm with her backpack so then Ned will let her go and then she escapes until she got arrested by those local cops and she got suspended for two weeks by Colonel Dugan so Miyagi uh, uses this time to take Julie's son to a Buddhist monastery to teach her the true ways of karate and how to handle her anger issues that, that was going around. So Julie learns through the direct lessons about balance, coordination, awareness, and respect for all life. She has to be friends with several monks around, including the Grand Abbot. The monks host a birthday party for her later on, because I know through the entire two weeks of training, you know, she especially during that jump kick that she had to do. Yeah, she had to perform that and try to find ways not to harm any bugs. Not to mention listening to music on her boombox. You know, that's where you hear the song um, Dreams by the Cranberries. 
Uh, yeah, they have a mixture of 90s songs in there, because it is set in the 90s, of course. Um, anyway, and I know, this, this is kind of funny, because they had all the monks start dancing, too. <laughs> okay. Um, even before this whole thing happened, um, yeah, they went to a local gas station just so they can be arrived over there. So they got bumped into all these uh, gas pumping guys, and that's what led to a fight with Mr. Miyagi, you know, fighting against these guys. Yeah, because they were also ready to attack uh, Julie. Okay. So, of course, um, back to this, she did have a birthday party for her, giving her a cake and an arrow that Miyagi had caught while was in a flight in a demonstration of Zen archery. That was really cool. And she then made a birthday wish that, for her secret, that she wanted to invite um, all the monks um, to her house. And she made a promise to have the monks appear in Boston. And they did. They actually came over just when uh, Julie finally went back to school. You know, things were going good for the better for her. You know, she, she's no longer angry anymore. And she's finally with Eric and trying to take care of, of the hawk, Angel, because I know he was taking care of her. So, by her return, um, she discovers that Angel is being relocated at some point to an animal sanctuary. So Miyagi assisted Julie to release the bird back to the wild by using pain suppression technique, as you saw in the first film, to heal uh, Angel's wings. So now she could fly. So for the preparation of the senior prom, Miyagi actually teaches her how to dance, using a mixture of karate uh, techniques in there. <laughs> And as he purchased um, a prom dress, a very beautiful prom dress for her, so that way she'll be able to go on her dates, which is Eric, driving in his uh, sporty red car. So, Jolie goes to the prom with Eric, while Mr. Miyagi goes with his uh, monks to bowling, you know, just going around, you know, doing the, the use of Zen bowling. <laughs> Yeah, where they actually start to bowl while being blind here. <laughs> and they use all their techniques in order for them to win. You know, they're going against the competition with the, the guy along with his buddies. Yeah. So it was like something that they were very surprised at how to do. At the senior prom, you know, they're having the best time of their lives until suddenly the alpha elite uh, butts in, you know, using their bungee jump techniques. They jumped in, which one of them actually injured um, his arm. Um, Eric shows concern, but Ned tells them to mind his own business. So then Eric drives uh, Julie's son home and kisses her until Ned follows them around and actually smashes uh, his car windows with a baseball bat. So Ned challenged Eric to a fight at the docks that's being joined in by Colonel uh, Dugan and the rest of the Alpha Elite. So they set fire to Eric's car and severally beat him completely until he was being saved by Julie Son and Miyagi. So then Ned tries to grab Julie Son but challenges him to a fight. She holds on her own using the karate that she had learned, including the, the jump kick, even when Ned throws sand at her face, and Julie defeats Ned and turns her back on him completely until Colonel, until Colonel Dugan bullies the rest of the group and continues to fight against Mr. Miyagi, which if, at this rate, he was going to fight uh, Julie's son as well. So, apparently... Miyagi challenges and he actually won the fight, leaving the Alpha Elite disappointed in their dis instructor and then things were going great. So, of course, it's not in the tournament, it's all in the docks. And then finally the film ends with Angel flying freely above the water. Yeah. 
Okay, well, it had its good moments, I'll give you that. The, the moments I just mentioned already, you know, with the monks. Yeah, I, I did love the monks, actually. I mean, you know, they, they were actually uh, very helpful. And they, they really tried their best to help uh, Julie Song get rid of all the anger issues with Mr. Miyagi joining in. Um, but they're actually really cool. Um, and I did love the scenes with the bowling alley where they, you know, they're just using their technique of zip bowling and all that. Um, that sort of thing. Um, and Hilary Swank playing the performance of Julie Song. I mean, at first, I mean, here we go. It's going to be the same issue just like how I had with Jesse from Free Willy. You know, the way he acted all... You know, angry, stubborn, a bit of a jerk, a complete asshole too at times. And the fact that he has to move to um, his foster parents, which he wasn't getting along with them very well until he suddenly be friends with uh, a killer whale, uh, Willie. Also had to fix all the crimes that he's been doing, yes, because he's always been getting into bigger trouble. Yeah, I mean, he got arrested too. Um, yeah, I felt like this was exactly what this was going to happen, you know, with the character Julie Pierce, but apparently she changed her ways uh, after, you know, karate and training. So now she turned out to be a lot better. But I didn't like her bitchy attitude that she's gotten, but I understand that, you know, she misses her parents. She wants them back, but she won't be able to. That sucks. Um, but for her performance, uh, she she was great, and so was Nobuyuki Pamarita, you know, as excellent as she as he can be, and as Mr. Miyagi, and it was great to see him once more. It's just sad that this was his last film that he ever got to do, although he had, although Pamarita did got to do other films after that, so, I mean, he did, he did several films for a while until his death. Um, he was also in the TV show called, um, uh, the Mystery Files of Chevy Rue that was on Nickelodeon in 96. So he, he has done a few, he did a couple more works to his death. Um, but this was his last movie that he ever did. Michael Ironside was incredibly uh, fierceful and tough as Colonel Paul Dugan. I mean, he's definitely the best, too. I mean, he's almost right up there with um, John Kreese. Uh, played by Martin Cove in in the Karate Kid films. Um, the vil and Eric uh, McGowan, played by Chris Carrad, was also great as um, Julie Sons' um, love interest and in, you know, security guard in training. Um, the villains, on the other hand, with the leader uh, Ned Randall, played by Michael Catterberry, they were terrible. Awful. Very bad, or, or right. I mean, especially when you have one guy who was about to rape her. Started doing a lot of stupid things to everyone. I mean, they. So the villains were incredibly weak. Um, there's so many problems with the story that didn't quite follow. I understand. It, plus, the film got pretty silly at times. And the way they're actually treating uh, Julie Son is just uh, too much. I guess another problem is that we're trying to become more PC. You know, because it's like, instead of being a guy, it could be a girl. But there's nothing wrong with having a female lead. You know, having another student to join by. It's just, it wasn't handled very well. And if they had to stop focusing on PC culture and stuff, then that's exactly what we had to go for. And I, I know, I mean, if this movie was made today, that, that would be a problem. But, but at least that's not the case here, because this one was made in 94, or they filmed it in early 94, or 93 for that matter. Now, Daniel's son had been mentioned in the film, but it wasn't explained very well. We, we never found out what happened to him, and that's what pisses me off, also. I mean, see, that's what happens when they can't even come up with a better excuse. 
So they just ridden them off that way. The violence was uh, pretty strong in the movie too. Hard to believe. I mean, I was amazed that that this movie wasn't given a PG-14 rating, which they should. It's still PG rated. Um, yeah, because of the scenes uh, with um, Ned trying to rape um, Julie Son. Um, and the fight scenes at the end too, as well as some of the, the fight scenes right in the middle of it. Um, I love that jump kick that Julie Son had did. I know she had to do a lot of practice. That, that flying jump kick. Um, and um, the cinematography looks um, incredible. You know, done by Lassio um, Kovacs. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and, uh, you know, the setting and, and the shots of Boston, Massachusetts, especially during the opening. You know, with the command the commendation and all those other shots here and there. Yeah. Editing um, Ronald Roos. Yeah. Edited perfectly. Um, as I said, the film was a flop. I mean, it only earned 15.8 million out of its 12 million budget, so didn't make more as, as they could. Um, but that's what you get. The score is done by Bill Conti, so they got him back. Um, so we do. So I love the score that they actually had chose. So at least that's as memorable as they could be. But they use most of the score from the original films. Um, and it does have a mixture of 90 songs, you know, all of which were hits, such as uh, the song called "You Gotta Be" by Desiree. Yes, hard to believe that song was in the movie before it became. Um, a huge hit, and I saw the music video on VH1 back in '95. You know, you gotta be bad, you gotta be bold, you gotta be riser, you gotta be hard, you gotta be tough, you gotta be stronger, you gotta be cool, you gotta be calm, you gotta stay together. Oh, why all I know is love will save the day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. So I was surprised to hear that song. Uh, it was at the end credits. And of course, Cranberry's Dreams, as I mentioned already. Um, so, a lot, of, a lot of great songs joined in. Um, so, it's what it is, but it's just pretty bad. Right? Unnecessary. We didn't need this. You can say for yourself that it could be watchable, but otherwise, it's just a waste of time really is. You'd just be better off watching the first two films, which are way better. Um, the third movie could be watchable, but it's still as bad as it could be. Uh, well, what can we do? But all I can say was, I mean, the writing of the film is very bad. I mean, poorly written, too, and poorly executed as well. I mean, Mark Lee obviously doesn't know what he's doing. But the direction was uh, pretty impressive by Christopher Cam. So that's what we saw. Uh, but either way, um, as bad as it was, at least it could be like the, the third film. It, it could be worth watching just for the performances of Nobuyuki Pavarita and Hilary Srink. But if you want to see her in a better performance, in a better movie, uh, check out Million Dollar Baby. That was stars and directed by uh, Clint Eastwood. Because it has a similarity of this film, too. I said, that's a whole different story here. Okay. I would not recommend The Next Karate Kid. I do love The Hawk, by the way, <laughs> named Angel. Very cute, but yeah. So that's the next Karate Kid, and I give the movie one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll continue with the 2010 remake, The Kung Fu Kid. Yeah, Karate Kid.
with um, Will Smith's son, Jaden Smith, and Jackie Chan. I'll see you later. Bye.